Well, turns out I was wrong. Directional air roll is one of the most difficult mechanics in Rocket League to learn. It's also the most overused, overglorified, and overtrained mechanic in the game. While I still stand by my original video, I have to be honest about it. It's massively flawed. It's been a year since I made that video, and I've since learned and understood directional air roll on a whole nother level. So, whether you watched my previous tutorial or you're learning directional air roll for the first time, allow me to share with you my revamped directional air roll training and the next steps to total aerial control. When I first learned and taught directional air roll, I did so by explaining that you can ostensibly control your car in the air with a single direction of stick inputs. While this is still and will always be true, the fact is it's not efficient. In that video I mentioned that you should be incorporating other stick directions as early as possible when you are comfortable adding them. I want to firmly reiterate this point because I myself fell victim to this horrendous habit and must implore you to not become too comfortable or overly reliant on a single stick input. Now, whether you watch this or skip straight to the bit in the video where I explain how I believe you should be training directional air roll, I can't in good conscience just give you the how without the why. First, I wholeheartedly believe that if you're approaching directional air roll for the first time or even somewhat familiar with it, you should do your best to avoid the traditional training methods of free play and rings maps. Now let me be perfectly clear, both of these things do have value but to approach them as either entry points or the main method of training directional air roll simply puts the cart before the horse. The truth is, just because you can spin around and fly through some rings doesn't mean you actually gain skills necessary to be successful in a game. So instead of just accepting the status quo and telling you to do what I did because it eventually worked out for me, I want to instead give you what I wish I had, a way to develop the skills that are both efficient and practical. In my opinion, properly learning directional air roll means recontextualizing the mechanic entirely in order to understand what its intended purpose is. Directional air roll is a recovery mechanic one that requires intention and anticipation, meaning you need to be aware of what will happen before it happens in order to be successful at it. The reason using a single stick input works as well as it does is due to the fact that it allows you the ability to produce reoccurring moments during your rotation that can be recognized by your brain over time. If you're always seeing the car in a similar way, then that familiarity becomes your semblance of control. Like I said, becoming too reliant on a single directional input limits both your efficiency and ultimately your control. Sure, it works in training and in rings maps, but unless everything lines up perfectly, applying it to something like an air roll is going to yield more failure than success. Now, in a perfect world, players would be able to make plays in the air using little to no directional air roll, instead going up for balls at the right angle and speed every time. Unfortunately, we live in a godless hellscape with people who struggle to acknowledge the purpose of a cart corral, so you might as well learn how and when you should be using directional air roll. Let's start with the why. If I were to jump into the air and try to turn left, several things will happen simultaneously. The first being that any flat, non-rolling rotation, whether that's up, down, left, or right, has a form of input acceleration. Meaning, any direction I push my stick, my car's rotation speed ramps up over a short period of time. Likewise, that buildup isn't just rotation speed, but it's also a buildup in rotational momentum. So if I jump and hold my stick to the left, my car builds up its rotation speed from nil to max and yet, when I let go of my stick, my car still continues to rotate from that built up momentum. Try applying this to something like an air dribble and you'll see just how cumbersome it can be to try and maintain a controlled path to the ball as well as staying with the ball after making your first or follow up touch. Aha! So you do need directional air roll in order to do those fancy air dribble things. I mean, kind of, but not really. The reality is a lot less spectacular than you might think. Like I said, when you use it is just as if not more important than how you use it and why you're using it is the key to the whole thing. To best illustrate this, I've put together a training pack. This routine will take you from zero stick air roll adjustment all the way up to nuanced and more mechanical adjustments. It's designed to be progressive, so whether you're learning this mechanic for the first time or exploring tips to improve your aerial car control, these routines will both train your directional air roll and teach you just how little you need to really be effective. Here we have a ball right above the crossbar. If I were to jump, boost, and fly into this ball, the most likely outcome is that the ball will smash against the backboard and pinch away. In order to score this ball, we have two options. The first is to fly high enough into the air so that we can come down on top of the ball and hit it into the goal. Effective? Certainly. Efficient? Not so much. Instead, let's use our directional air roll. Taking a similar approach as our first attempt, we fly up towards the ball, but before contact, we press and hold our directional air roll until the car's wheels are facing the ceiling. 
Now, instead of just banging the ball into the backboard, we've redirected the ball down into the goal and all we did was just press one extra button. No left stick adjustment, nothing mechanically difficult, just simple, effective use of directional air roll. Same as shot two, we're going to be using very minimal inputs on our adjustment. Since our goal of hitting the ball down doesn't change, only our angle, we need to fly at the ball in a way that will provide both contact in a downward direction as well as at an angle. Instead of rolling over 180 degrees though, we only need to roll it over so that our wheels are facing opposite of the goal. Depending on your choice of left or right directional air roll will make scoring on one side of the goal more difficult than the other. For instance, using air roll left, I need less of that input on the right side of the goal than I do for the left. We'll discuss this more in later shots, but for now I encourage you to practice this shot on both the left and right side of the goal using the mirror option. Shot 3 is a very similar setup to shot 1, only this time the ball is further away from the goal. If we try to use the same approach as shot 1, based on our setup here, simply flying up to the ball and rolling the car over isn't going to be enough to score. For this, we are going to need to add in another input. Once we have our car rolled over, all we need to do is pull down on our left stick to pitch the nose of the car towards the ground and boost into the ball. Note, on your approach you should only be boosting upwards until you've matched the height of the ball. Allow your momentum to carry you up a little further and then make your pitch down adjustment. Now then, let's apply what we've learned to a moving target. If you've gotten comfortable with shot 3, then this shouldn't give you too much trouble. Only instead of flying towards the ball off the jump, we're going to get ourselves up into the air and maintain some height while we wait for our moment to attack. This shot does require that you have some basic aerial skills, but nothing too demanding. For shot 5, while scoring is always the goal, I want you to be using this shot as a way to practice multiple things. Since this is the sort of situation that comes up in games quite often, it's important that you're familiar with multiple ways to approach it. The first and most basic doesn't even involve air roll, just focus on making good contact on the ball. Once you have that, it's time to bring in our directional air roll. Instead of just making an aerial touch, we want to work on inverted touches. Just like before, we're going to fly at the ball but before contact use our directional air roll to adjust our car over and strike the ball with our hood slash nose and boosting through the hit. For a little added help, try focusing on hitting the ball just behind the blinking light on the bottom of the ball. After we hit the ball, use directional air roll to roll the car back over. This two piece of air roll hit, air roll recovery is foundational to aerial car control. With very minimal adjustments, you'll be able to take shots like these, make a backwards aerial touch, recover mid-air, boost after the ball, and apply the same simple inputs from shots 1 and 3. Congratulations, you've just unlocked double taps. Shot 6 is yet another setup that perfectly utilizes all the same techniques and inputs we've been training up to this point. It's what I would consider a good melding of the concepts from shots 2 and 4. To further simplify, if your timing is good enough, you can even do this shot without adjusting left or right on your stick. Regardless, our goal here is to pick out our point of contact on the ball, where in the air we're going to meet the ball to make that contact, and rolling over slash pitching the nose down just before contact to send the ball towards the goal. Now let's start using the wall. For shot 7, the big takeaway here is simplicity. Just like we did with shots 1 and 3, where we only adjusted before contact, we're going to do the same here only this time it's going from inverted to neutral. As we drive up the wall, pay attention to the ball's speed and height. When you notice the ball is running out of vertical momentum, this is the point in which you should jump off the wall after it. After we jump off, hold down directional air roll until the car is neutral. Now you have a near exact setup like we did from shot 5. This is a great shot for training backboard clears and cross-court air dribbles, especially from a defensive position. Shot 8 is a bit more specific and not really a common in-game situation, but it's a wonderful shot to train for multiple techniques. Like shot 7, we want to pay attention to the ball's height and speed, only this time we have to be more deliberate about the moment where achieving contact is going to be possible. Once we have that all worked out, we want to jump off the wall and use air roll to put our car in position for contact. Again, keep in mind which wall you're coming off of relative to your preference of directional air roll. Each wall requires less or more air roll input depending on which one you're using. Now it's time to get inverted. The next step from the wall is the ceiling. Don't worry, you don't have to master ceiling shots to get through this. Rather, simply driving up the wall and onto the ceiling is great practice for learning how to control the car's left and right direction while you're inverted. Now for those looking to be successful in a shot like this, you're going to want to keep a couple things in mind. First, as you transition from the wall to the ceiling, you're now on borrowed time, meaning your car will only travel so far before it begins to fall towards the ground. You can get a little extra mileage out of this by holding down accelerate to keep your wheels gripped a little bit longer. Next, pay close attention to the moment your car loses that grip and begins to fall. The more falling speed your car has, the harder it's going to be to use boost to maintain your height. 
A good tip for this is to hold down your directional air roll input before you begin falling. This will begin the rolling process as soon as it becomes available and you can start boosting to keep the car up in the air. There are more shots in this training pack for you to practice and work on. It includes some wall to air dribble and ground to air dribble setups. Again, I strongly encourage you take each of these shots and look at how little air roll you need to use in order to get the touch you want. Focusing on minimal adjustment when necessary and being deliberate about boosting towards your intended target with the nose of your car. Now, I'm aware that there is a lot more I can share about this topic, and I intend to, but in an effort to keep this video from being over 30 minutes long, I'm going to close it out here. I'm going to be following this up with a part 2 very soon, where I'll discuss more advanced stick adjustments while holding air roll and how to control the ball with it. So for those of you that aren't, I hope you'll subscribe and come back when that's uploaded. For now, I'm confident that practicing this routine and making these types of deliberate adjustments will help put you on the path to better aerial control. Even as I'm making this video, I'm still learning new things about this mechanic and have plenty left to work on as well. I look forward to sharing the rest of this soon, so until next time, get out there and work on that air roll.